All right, well, I'm starting a new video today. We're gonna do a little more work on the uh, uh, four-stroke swap. And I'm gonna start it off with a little demonstration. And out here in the alley, I've got uh, two pieces of wood. There's one there, and there's another one right there. The distance between those two pieces of lumber is 10 feet. And what I'm gonna do is show you uh, a, a standing start on this bike. Um, and this is all going to lead into the modifications uh, that I'm uh, going to make uh, at least start on here in just a little bit. So, but like I said, I'm going to do a standing start, uh, no push off with my legs, just lift my legs up off the ground and uh, let the motor do all the work. And it's going to be a uh, full throttle start as well. So I'll go get the bike started. and. Uh, We'll do this little demonstration. Okay, that was a, st a standing full throttle start from 10 feet. And I guess you could use a little timer that's uh, below the video uh, to count how many seconds it took me to go those 10 feet. Uh, so now I will, uh, uh, we'll get to the, to the modifications. So let me go get everything set up and uh, I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, before I get to the real purpose of this video, I wanted to come in and make a quick point before I forget. Uh, the little set screws that were on uh, this 14 tooth sprocket from uh, the jack shaft to the clutch, those little set screws actually backed out on me the other day. And I lost the set screws. I don't know where they are. I had to go buy new ones. But fortunately, the, uh, uh, the keyway, the key pin, uh, just fell out on the driveway uh, even though those are pretty easy to find though but anyway when I initially I did put Loctite on these um, set screws and originally I used the blue Loctite which is the medium strength and uh, it just wasn't up to the task I guess the vibration or uh, there is a little bit of heat that gets generated here uh, so that it, it they didn't hold. Uh, so I went back and I hit them with the uh, uh, the high strength uh, red uh, thread locker. So I just wanted to make that quick point and I, I did it on every single locking collar sprocket on the jack shaft. Uh, I haven't had any problems. I put Loctite in other, the blue Loctite in other places. All those bolts, bolts are still tight. but on your jack shaft, use the red high strength uh, thread locker. So, just wanted to make that point before I forgot. All right, and here's the main purpose of uh, this video. Uh, I'm gonna swap out the jack shaft sprocket. This is the sprocket that goes between the jack shaft and the clutch for obviously a larger diameter one. This sprocket is a number is a 14 teeth and this one has 24. And I got this stuff at a tractor supply company. They're called Welda Sprockets. Basically what you get is you, you buy these little hubs and they come in different sizes, you know, a pretty wide array. I mean, even stuff like 11 16 and 7 8 inch and 9 16 inch and stuff like that. This one's obviously three quarter. Uh, you can see right down there at the bottom, it's three quarter. And I'll show you here on the sprocket if that'll show up. The number 40 is the size of the chain. Uh, 24 is not showing up, but it's 24 teeth. So you get these little sprockets, and uh, what you do is they're machined. It's a machine fit. You put the sprocket over the hub, and then you would weld the sprocket to the hub. Uh, if you're real clever, I was thinking of doing this. Doesn't mean I'm real clever, but what you could effectively do is make a, a bracket you could drill there's plenty of meat here on this hub so you could drill a couple holes tap those drill some holes in your sprocket and uh, just run some bolts through and then what you effectively do is you just buy one hub and you could have different sprockets and that plate that you would make to connect the uh, hub to the sprocket you could just when you get another sprocket just drill holes in that 
and uh, there you go. Then you don't have to weld this uh, sprocket to the hub. Also works if you don't have a welder. Uh, I would, if you're going to drill holes in this to uh, make a plate, some kind of retainer, then I would advise using a bench press. But that's the basic idea, and you get plenty of meat here uh, to weld onto. And so, uh, so yeah, that's the basic idea. I'll pick these up, and you can see the difference between the two. And uh, so let me uh, let me get my phone out. We'll use a calculator, and I'll show you some uh, some of my math. Hopefully it's good. Okay, and basically what we want to know is how much reduction we're going to get with this larger diameter sprocket. So here's my math. I hope I'm doing this right. I'm not an engineer, uh, but here's what I'm figuring. So the original sprocket that we're taking off is 14 teeth. So we'll do 14. The new sprocket is 24. So do 14 divided by 24. Okay, and that's uh, 50, call it just 58. So effectively what that's saying is that this sprocket is 58% the diameter of the larger sprocket. At least that's my interpretation. So the percent reduction uh, is obviously the opposite of this. Now if you do it in your head you're good, but a quick way of doing it is just do minus one. That means the larger sprocket is going to give us a 41%, almost 42% uh, gear reduction. And that's what this bike really, really, really needs. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, uh, I hope I'm right on my math. Uh, if I'm not, you can uh, let me know, send me a message or, uh, or whatever. I, you know, <laughs> don't send me a message that just says your math sucks because I'm 30 years old and I'm well aware that my math sucks. So, and if you really got the balls to prove your math skills, then uh, post a response video and we'll just see how good you really are. <laughs> so, anyway, I guess now we'll just get started on the work. Well, I guess before we get started on the work, I should mention a couple things that are going to need to be modified. Uh, obviously, there you can see the uh, chain shroud that I made. The larger end up here goes around the clutch. And the skinnier, the, the uh, less diameter uh, end of the shroud was for the jack shaft, which was this 14-2 uh, sprocket. Now, obviously, that's not going to work. So we're going to have to make a new shroud, and we're also going to have to make, or yeah, we we'll have to make a new chain because obviously the circumference of the new sprocket. Uh, is much greater than the circumference of the old sprocket, so our chain length uh, needs to be greater. So, just a couple things to mention there, and uh, so now we will get uh, started on the work. <laughs> 